Today, we're looking at Apollo Global's deputy CIO of credit, John Zito. His journey from distressed debt trader to direct lending advocate shows Apollo's ambitions to reshape not only itself, but also the broader credit markets. Bloomberg's Alison McNeely reported on this and joins us now. It's a really fascinating story. He started as a distressed debt trader and just sort of owns the market now, it would seem. What was the sort of turning point that turned him into basically a superstar? So essentially his kind of evolution from a distressed debt, distressed debt trader to sort of a direct lender really sort of started around sort of 2019 period. Essentially, Apollo Global Management built its name on sort of distressed debt investing, value investing, if you will. And really, it sort of came to be that the firm saw an opportunity in making direct loans to companies and sort of he was kind of a person who really spearheaded that charge, had that idea, and it sort of has really helped transform the firm into something very different than it was, say, even 10 years ago. And he's a possible contender to take over the whole firm at some point. One line, and you might be surprised by which line really stood out to me in the story, and that is that he's known outside the firm for being accessible and decisive. That's really all you need, right? Along with the technical skills, obviously. Exactly. When I spoke to people in the market, they really talked about Apollo, and particularly Jim Zelter, his boss, and John Zito, as being, you know, very quick to sort of execute. And really, especially with everything that we've seen happen with the banks in the last couple of years, you know, the slowdown in the leveraged loan market, if you're a corporate borrower and you have a need for money, a need for money fairly quickly, and perhaps some complexity around your situation, you know, knowing exactly who to call and what their answer is going to be fairly quickly is, is actually really prized. If you're him right now and you're thinking about the longer term, because you know somebody like that has you know, a five-year plan and a ten-year plan and a, a two-day plan, right? How do you plan to potentially one day run something of Apollo's size, especially after he expands the unit that he's in now to double what it is? So the overall firm, Apollo Global Management, has a goal of reaching a trillion dollars of assets under management by 2026. They're currently at about $650 billion. And credit is going to be a key part of that. It is the biggest, fastest growing unit. So really, Zito has a job to continue growing credit assets under management, continue to ensure that the performance is good, that the quality is good, and that that is a scalable business. And that, that is going to be key to his future at the firm, regardless of his title. Now, there are broad Broader questions here, right, about Apollo and its size and its ballooning size and the fact that it uses its own balance sheet. What are the risks now that it looks like Apollo is getting much more into direct lending, is almost becoming a, a bank of sorts? Yeah, so it's essentially, it's not a bank, but in many ways it acts like a bank. And this is certainly something that regulators have been thinking of more about in the industry broadly. So Apollo is part of that, but they are not the only firm. This is a really a question that uh, regulators are contending with. What do we do with these big alternative assets? managers, how should we regulate them, what constraints should we put on them that they don't already have because they are becoming so important as lenders to companies. I have to ask you about the ties to the Middle East investment mm -hmm. you know, vehicles and Mubadala and so on. They have very much helped John Zito, right, with new funds. Oh, yes. The relationship between Mubadala and Apollo is significant. That uh, sovereign wealth fund has given the firm a lot of money and really has been key to drive its ambitions in private credit, you know, providing that, you know, as much as Apollo has its own balance sheet, they're sort of providing a balance sheet too. I mean, we've seen U.S. pension investors really kind of running short on capital to allocate to alternative investments, and the Middle East sovereign wealth funds have really stepped in to fill that gap.